Now, some of us in this chamber are old enough to remember when the current Prime Minister and the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster promised that if we voted leave, the NHS would receive £350 million a week. We were told leaving the EU would be easy and frictionless. But now this vote leave government is spending, on my calculation, around £250 million a week to prepare us for the realities of Brexit. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. These were preparatory measures. We have no idea what the exact cost of our exit is going to be. There will be tariffs. The question is on what scale. And we now know that this means a deterioration in our terms of trade. It means higher costs for business. And ultimately, it will mean a rise in the cost of living, which will hit the poorest in this country hardest. No. The UK has many similarities to the UK. It is a single market, one which I will acknowledge has currently been undermined by our EU departure. A customs union, a, a, single, um, a single currency. We share a currency and other far closer and deeper economic and social ties. Britain carries out 40 per cent of its trade with the European Union, and I agree with the Scottish National Party that leaving this institution is having and will continue to have profound economic shock, shocks. But Scotland does over 60 per cent of its trade with Wales, England and Northern Ireland, and impacting that would be cataclysmic. This crisis has been a clear indicator of the fact that working together can achieve better outcomes. It's likely that we will hear that Scot had Scotland voted for independence in 2014, with the obvious difficulties of separating from a 300-year-old union, coupled with a likely currency crisis, it would potentially be in a very pre precarious place at this time as it dealt with COVID. Now, I mentioned consistency earlier. If this pandemic had struck in a world of which Scotland had voted for independence and was in a transition period out of the UK, do we really think the Scottish Government would be pressing for an extension to the date of Scotland's departure due to COVID? I am a Liberal. I am a Federalist. I am an Internationalist. I believe not in erecting borders, but in dismantling them. And I do not think the politics of nationalism on either side of this House, the politics of grievance, and ultimately the politics of division are in any way in which to conduct truly progressive politics. And I am proud to stand here representing a constituency that voted both to remain in the UK and to remain in the EU. But as the Government looks towards the end of this year, I would urge it to remember that two constituent parts of the UK voted decisively to remain in the EU. 